This episode of Camera Position is brought to you by Audible. Please visit audiblepodcast.com slash camera position for your free audiobook download. Hi, this is Jeff Curto, and welcome to episode number 78 of Camera Position, a podcast about the creative side of photography. Well, in this Photographer's Roadmap, a project planning sort of set of podcasts where I've been trying to help guide you through the process of planning projects and creating projects, and ultimately, we hope, finishing projects, one of the things that I alluded to in the previous episode, Camera Position 77, was the idea of distribution, distribution of this project and what form that distribution will take. So this episode of the Project Planning Roadmap, uh, Photographer's Roadmap, is to define uh, audience and distribution. Defining an audience for your work and making sure that they can easily view it is a pretty big part of planning the project. Without an audience and a way to distribute the work to that audience, You could wind up with that whole tree falling in the forest and nobody there to hear it kind of a thing. And then you're not really sure if you've made any kind of visual noise in that forest if uh, nobody's there to hear it or to respond to it. So what we're doing in this episode is to take a look at some ways to consider your audience and your potential methods of distribution of the work. Now, the early stages of the planning process, which... uh, Uh, date back a few episodes of camera position. In the early stages, you defined your audience by looking at some concentric circles of the people who were most interested or most likely to be interested in the body of work uh, in the inside concentric circle and then the uh, subsequent outside concentric circles to those who were less interested or perhaps least interested in the work. And in doing that, you figured out who they were by thinking about the work and who might be interested in viewing it. Your next steps are to look at that definition of your audience in these two ways. So first of all, we've got to verify that audience. Is your audience target correct? Has it changed as you've started to work on your project planning? As you've learned about the project itself, have you discovered that there are certain things about the audience you thought might be interested and turn out that they're not as interested? Or have you discovered new audiences who you think might be interested in the body of work as you have been creating it. So making sure that your audience is who you think they are, you might want to talk to people that you think are in the target audience and gauge their interest. Additionally, you might want to talk to a fairly wide variety of people who might not fit your idea of who your target is and ask about their interest in the project. You might find potential viewers who are interested in what you're doing but who you would not consider as part of your original target audience. So refine your audience by drawing concentric circles to represent each group and their level of interest. So another aspect of uh, targeting your audience and really verifying uh, that that they're there and the people you think they are uh, is not only verifying who they are, but also verifying where they are. What's the best method of having your audience see the work? Is one method of distribution enough, or do different subsets of your audience need different methods of accessing the information that you're creating? Knowing where your audience is, either physically or in other less concrete ways, for example, perhaps emotionally, is very important. You need to know that so you can begin to put together your distribution strategy. You need to know how best to communicate with your audience, how they may want or perhaps need to see your work. These facts may be combined with how you want them uh, to see the work as well. So how do you want them to see the work and how do they need to see the work or perhaps how do they prefer to see the work? You may have very specific ideas about how the work should best be shown, which might require some compromise with your audience on how they can best access it. Well, the fact that you're listening to a podcast suggests that you are a person who is interested in audio entertainment, of verbal entertainment specifically, 
So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Audible.com, and I've become a big fan of Audible, not only because they're sponsoring camera position and helping me defray some of the costs of producing camera position, but also because I just love being read to. I mean, there's just something really wonderful about that. Uh, Audible.com, the Internet's leading provider of spoken audio entertainment, and they have tens of thousands, I think their their title count is over 50,000 titles to choose from. Every genre, uh, every poten- potential possible kind of uh, book that you might think to uh, read, uh, you can download to your computer and then subsequently to your iPod or other MP3 player and listen to it uh, through uh, this uh, amazing service that Audible provides. But even more amazing, Audible has set up a situation where camera position listeners can download a free audiobook. And uh, you'll uh, get to that free audiobook by going to audiblepodcast.com. That's www.audiblepodcast.com slash camera position. And once you get there, uh, you will uh, need to uh, enter in some credit card information and so forth. But your credit card actually won't be charged because you get a free audiobook uh, to uh, to be able to keep. And even if you cancel your subscription to Audible, which you can do at any time, uh, you get to keep the free audiobook. And uh, I am uh, now deep into my second one. I am listening to The Great Gatsby, F. Scott Fitzgerald's masterpiece, and certainly one of my favorite books. Uh, An unbelievable writer, but read to you as you're driving or doing things around the house. It's a pretty remarkable experience. So I would uh, really recommend you take a look at this uh, audiblepodcast.com slash camera position. Get your free audio book. Check it out. See what you think. Let me know what you think and also what you're listening to because I'm always on the lookout for great new literature and uh, great new ideas that I can get through the spoken word. So uh, thanks to the good folks at Audible for sponsoring Camera Position. So back now to our concept of distribution of the work. You know, we don't often think of showing our work as being distribution of the work, but they're really one and the same. Getting the work out to be seen is an important part of the process of creating the work in the first place. It is, in fact, the culmination of all of the hard work you've put into the project. Try to brainstorm all of the possible ways your work could be distributed. Here are just a few of the many possibilities of getting your work out to be seen by an audience. Now, physically is the sort of standard way that photographers think about distributing work, especially the fine art photographer, matted and uh, kept in a portfolio box that can be uh, distributed in some way, matted and framed and hung on a wall. And, you know, there are lots of places to do this. Uh, Somebody that I know well has been... uh, recently displaying their work in a local coffee shop. Someone else has been displaying in a local library. Uh, There are lots and lots of places that are not your traditional gallery spaces where work can be hung on a wall and put in front of lots and lots of different eyeballs. Uh, In a portfolio book, so a a bound book that uh, has uh, sheets in it where you can put the images in there. Postcards, posters, uh, the, the kinds of books that now are available through services like Blurb or through Apple's Aperture or iPhoto uh, or MyPublisher.com. Uh, and for, for what it's worth, MyPublisher.com and Apple's Aperture and iPhoto all use the same printing presses. It's really the same company for, for what that's worth. But, uh, and, and for some of the above strategies of matted and framed and matted in a portfolio box and so forth, you have to determine a printing type, traditional darkroom prints, color or black and white, or inkjet or other commercially or commercially digitally based prints, traditional color prints that are made uh, uh, in a traditional darkroom, or offset reproductions, printed sheets or books from some of those aforementioned commercial services, brochures, loose leaf, uh, any kind of a, a method where the image is actually physical and printed in some way so it can be held in the hands or uh, mounted on a wall in some way. Another possibility is uh, electronically, sending work out through email uh, or placing work on a website. I know many of you do that uh, either through your own personal websites or on something like Flickr.com. 
And, of course, one of the dilemmas with Flickr.com is because there are so many pictures, uh, a, a new body of work, a large body of work, is not really considered all that special because uh, that new body of work may not be uh, seen by even the large group of people looking at Flickr. Uh, it may be a better strategy uh, to have work on your own website, uh, but Flickr is a, is a good alternative. Um, a CD-ROM or a DVD with a structured or a simple slideshow. Uh, I know that uh, many of you are listening to uh, Brooks Jensen's uh, excellent Lenswork podcast, and uh, Brooks is a big advocate of uh, uh, the distribution on PDF, using PDF to distribute. And I, I hope that at least some of you are subscribers to uh, Lenswork's extended version, which is comes on uh, CD-ROM and where you can get uh, uh, much more content and audio content and video content and so forth. And Brooks is a, a tremendous advocate of that and really uses that medium rather uh, remarkably. Uh, and digital video slideshows with or without audio being able to create a slideshow that perhaps you show in a public space, perhaps you show on, as a friend of mine used to do, on the side of his garage uh, where he had lots of people driving by his house and uh, he had photographs continuously changing projected on the side of his garage. Um, and uh, perhaps other kinds of projection where you can think about ways and places where you can project images that other people can see or any other method you can think of where somebody can access this material and somebody can see the project that you have completed. What you may find is that part of your audience might need to be shown the work in one way, where another part of the audience might need to be shown the work in a different way. The idea of giving the work a greater and broader lifespan by distributing it in multiple channels is one that isn't often examined but is a really viable way of thinking about how your work can gain a larger audience than it might otherwise have. So some steps to take here. Uh, one, refine that audience. Think about who the uh, audience is, but just as importantly, think about where that audience is so that you can do step two, which is to figure out how to best reach your audience. And then step three, Choose your distribution methods. And I use the plural of that because I think it is very important to think about the fact that your body of work may need to be distributed in multiple different ways. So uh, the idea of being able to see the work in different ways is a significant part of distributing the work. I recently took part in the uh, Photo Lucida portfolio reviews, something that is just an outstanding experience. Um, and uh, if you want to take a look, I'll put a, a link to uh, photolucida.org on uh, the uh, cameraposition.com website. It's a biannual uh, event where uh, reviewers from all over the world literally come and look at photographers' portfolios. And in addition to the standard portfolio I have of some uh, 16 by 20 size prints uh, that I display and uh, talk about with the portfolio reviewers, I also had a book that I had produced through uh, blurb.com and brought that along. And by golly, if it didn't attract the attention of a number of people uh, who were interested in the possibility of publishing this work in book form. So uh, who knows what will come of it, but the idea that I had the book along with me and the uh, uh, ability to, to conceptualize, to see that work in that format. And, uh, and of course, then also the, uh, the issue of being able to just give a book away. Uh, if somebody's that interested, being able to just send it off to them or, or hand it to them and have them have that body of work that they were interested in, in the format that interests them, and a format that is substantially more portable than the 16 by 20 inch prints that I had. So the idea here of refining the audience, thinking about who your audience is, who are they, but also just as importantly, where are they located? And then again, also behind that of how will you reach them? How will you distribute the work that you're doing? And think about all of the different ways in which we can distribute work, printed, uh, physical materials, or electronic materials. So uh, thanks very much for listening to this episode of Camera Position, and I'll see you again on the next episode of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography. 
Camera Position is a proud member of the Photocast Network, your photo resource in the potosphere. PhotocastNetwork.com